Happy Wine Wednesday, everyone. Oh, gosh, I forgot my light. Look at me. Ray would be beating me up. You know, much better I look with the light on. Okay. No. I, I need one of those. Tonight. That's okay. <laughs> um, he, let's restart, right? Happy Wine Wednesday. I've got my cool painted seahorse glass. Um, still haven't done the seahorse nails, but I'm working on it. I have the decals. I just haven't done it yet. So next week, I'll be able to show you some cool nails. Anyways, I'm sipping on Chardonnay. Let me know what you're sipping on in the comment section. Tonight is open chat. I keep wanting, hey, uh, Zen Ginger, hey, Bonnie, glad to have you guys. Um, I keep wanting to do more with these episodes. Like, I love just coming and talking with you guys, answering your questions, and me and Holly and Ray and everybody having a conversation. It's it's community. That's what we want. But I keep wanting to do more with it. I just, ugh, guys, I can't find the time. So if anybody well, you wants work to work full time, me, that's tough. <laughs> right. I just want to put it out there again. If anybody wants to grow this channel, man, I am so ready for a partner or a helper or whatever. If, if any of you guys have that extra time and want to, you know, get involved, I can absolutely involve you. I just need help, you know, getting people in, getting these topics going, getting the social media going, etc. But Again, I'm already very grateful for people like Holly, who shows up every week, and Ray, who shows up when he can, and Zen Ginger for running the background stuff, making sure that YouTube doesn't, you know, nobody trolls us or whatnot. But anyways, I'm rambling. I know it. Happy Wine Wednesday. We're here with Open Chat again. Um, and I will tell you guys, I'm visiting Holly in July. It's a for sure thing now. Um, so even though it takes me forever to get things done, I promise you once I'm there, we're going to get some major things done. We're going to have some family fun, of course, but I'm also going to get with her about trying to make the channel better, trying to, you know, make sure that people that sign up for membership get their shirts and all that stuff. So there is an end date is all I can say. I'm still working to get it done sooner than that, but there is an end date because she'll help me figure it out. I know she will. Anyways, on to Wine Wednesday. We have Shiloh with us too. Shiloh, give us an update. What's going on with you? Um, I know you guys, uh, Zen Ginger just brought up Cheryl. I have reached out to her and she does respond. I really think she's just super busy. Um, you know, she's one of our icons. Like she's been doing seahorses since forever. And she doesn't just do seahorses, right? She has been involved with birds. She's been involved with societies. I mean, she like knows the science of it. I miss her coming to Wine Wednesday too, but I understand completely that she's got some stuff at home and, you know, I don't really have an answer. Holly, have you talked to Cheryl? I haven't. No. Every once in a while she pops on my Facebook, but I know she does all her own carpentry and home projects right. as well. And I remember she was working on her house. So yeah. that may be what she's up to. I don't I, know. I'm glad you brought it up, though. I will reach out to her because it's just like Dan. We miss having Dan mm -hmm. on. But he yeah. had family stuff going on. And he had, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. we all get older and, you know, stuff happens. But we would love to still have them here for sure. I'm right there with you. And I will reach out and see if they, maybe they can't join for a special episode or something. I know they can't come every week like we do. Um, even for me, it gets difficult. Tonight I was like, ah, I'm scrambling and trying to get here. So again, we need help, guys. All you youngsters out there that are just blossoming into the seahorse world, we need your help to keep this going because we don't want it to end, but you know, and I will reach out to them to see if we can get them on for an episode or two. But Holly, why don't you start us off? What were we talking about before we got live? Oh, I was talking about K1 because last week, remember we were talking about, I need to plan to consolidate my seahorses because they're getting older now. And if I have any more losses, 
I'm going to have so few in these big, huge tanks that I'm going to want to combine them in, into one tank. And so I ordered a batch of K1 today off of Amazon. And what I do with that is I put it into a two liter pot bottle. There's a video I used on YouTube mm -hmm. that showed an excellent way to do it. I got myself a little soldering iron, was really cheap. I think I got it like at Harbor Freight. And then you just poke holes like around the bottle, like around the bottom part, I think, and the top part. Okay. Remember, right? I'd have to look at my other one. It's been over a year since I did it, so I don't remember. But in the in the bottom of the bottle, like you put your holes, I think about two inches up, something like that. In the bottom of the bottle you fill it with those little glass stones that you can find ah, at mm -hmm. the dollar store. They hold the bottle down. You know, they put weight on the bottle and then you slip an airline into the bottle with a, um, air stone on, on the end of it. Okay. And, and I want to say, how did I do it? I think you do it through the top. If I remember, I'd have to watch the video again or look at the one I have and kind of remember how I did it because it's been a while. But there's videos on YouTube of how to do it. And you put a hole like in the cap of the bottle as well. I, rem I remember that. So okay. that the water can come out through the top, but it's mostly all water in there and not air other than the air that's coming in through so, the air. So real, look, real quick. And and there are multiple methods, right? There's mm -hmm. no wrong way. If it's working for you, mm -hmm. let it work for you, right? Mm -hmm. But I did mine, I think, completely different from what you're talking about. Are mm -hmm. you saying that the, the bottle is not inverted? Like nope, the cap it's not the inverted. It sits wow. straight up. It stays put mm -hmm. in my sump. And yeah, it's and a great that design. glass at the bottom. It holds it. Gotcha. Gotcha. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting because when I, I, and I do, you guys, you guys know, I, I've slacked off on videos. I have a, all the clips to make this video of me making my K1 media reactor and it's just putting it together. Haven't found the time, but it, maybe I'll do like a quick TikTok or something like just mm -hmm. to show the process without all the editing because that's what takes forever and i'm thinking i know i shared the video a while back yeah but i'm thinking you, now that i think of it the holes are only at the top i was gonna say well not at the bottom there's one hole at the bottom and the airline comes in through so there. i would say instead of us guessing find mm -hmm. the video and we can mm -hmm. share it again and then as you do it holly you know feel free to videotape what you're doing as own, you yeah. make it yeah make a video about it with mine i will try to share the clips that i've made without all that Sweet. editing um but with mine i actually made an entire design that used an actual sponge filter at the bottom and then when i put it in the tank even and this is i'm talking about the all-in-one so it mattered it it wouldn't work because it was too tall Right. So I ended up having to uh, downsize to a one liter bottle for the 40 gallon all in one and take the sponge off the bottom. And mine literally is a one gallon, uh, you know, like Sprite bottle or something that I took all mm -hmm. the wrapping off of and cleaned. And then I have the holes at the top. And the important part is you have to have that part under the water. Right. Because the, it has mm -hmm. the, the water has to bubble out somewhere and then in my design it's really simple i've got the k1 inside and then i have an airline without the air um without the uh what's it called the blue thing what's that called you just said it oh air stone an air yeah. stone i don't use any air stones i just literally have airline that comes to my um robert king char chamber and then also comes to my K1 media reactor. And I don't have a cap. My bottle is inverted. So the bottom 
you know, the, the part you would drink out of is at the bottom. There's no cap on it. And I literally just have poked or I've drilled a hole in the side right above the drinking line, if that makes sense. It'll, it'll be easier to understand if I post the videos. But um, basically just a, a hole right there. And that airline not only creates that constant spinning, but it also stops any of the small K1 that might try to get out, right? Because there's no cap on it. There's no anything on the bottom of mine. So it, it's interesting to me, though, that, Holly, that you find a new and updated design. Oh, here right? it is. There's actually a bunch of videos of it done that way. I think sure. this is the one I used. I'll try to send it over. Hey, Coral Works, I see you. And Holly, what we're talking about is K1. And have you guys noticed that it's really kind of taken the aquarium industry on, you know, like by storm? Like all the facets of the industry are kind of coming around to, hey, this is a really easier way to create biological filtration versus that uh i was the end of my sentence was versus that natural setting you can still do the natural settings no one's saying is that that's wrong or a bad way but having that k1 as your main biological filtration really it just works i mean like in my tank you guys might remember if you've come to previous wine wednesdays I lost, as I was cleaning my tank, I was drinking wine and I lost a big rock. I still have never found that damn rock, <laughs> but I do dump stuff else. Anyways, I lost a big rock and my tank clouded up because it, the bacteria had to catch up with the system because I didn't have as much bacteria because I lost the rock. But the system was fine and it cleared up in a couple days because I had the K1 media reactor working. I would suggest a K1 media reactor, as Holly and I are talking about, home built, not expensive, make it out of so a I just sent one liter, you the, but it, the it, video. it helps. I'm sorry. I just sent you the video in Messenger to our to our group, to the Wine oh. Wednesday group. Well, let me see if I can find it. But, and tell me more about, um, you know, just consolidation and what's your plan? How are you cycling it again? So basically I have two display tanks. I have a 55 gallon and a 75 gallon. And I have right now in the 55 gallon, there's only two seahorses. In the 75 gallon, there's four. Mm -hmm. But I don't like the 75 gallon tank as we talked about last week. It's not as good of a design as my 55 gallon. So what I'd like to do is next time I lose a seahorse, I'd like to move everybody into the 55 gallon. So the plan is to add more biomedia the K1 and get it cycling in the sump of the 75 gallon and just have it running so that when I'm ready to move everybody into the 55 gallon, I can move the K1 filter with them and add it to the sump of my other tank. And you're going to have so much filtration, it's going to be amazing, right? I'm well, get both it. of them right now, though, like the 55-gallon already has a K1 media reactor that's been running for, I think, a couple years now. But it also is full of bio balls. Mm -hmm. And the 75-gallon sump is full of bio balls. Mm -hmm. And I hate those things. I really like right. the one so my plan is to gradually ditch the bio balls and just have a clean sup with k1 media reactors running in it amen sister i get you i, I hear you because <laughs> those I bio balls trap every little thing yep 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 no and and i'm totally with you and i think you're on the right you know path as we talked about last week just to reiterate what you just said, you're starting a new one, giving it time to mature, basically grow the bacteria by tumbling and, and the nutrients getting in there and bacteria growing. 
Um, and you don't need, in your case, you don't need to use like beneficial bacteria or anything like that, like bottled, because you have a working system. So again, anybody new, your circumstance might be a little different. I've done a couple of videos. Well, and if um, I noticed an ammonia spike, though, that's what I would do, though, right? Wait, if you not if you noticed an ammonia like, spike, what? Like if I noticed that once I moved them over, that it wasn't enough biomedia that I was getting ammonia spikes. Okay. Would I want to add beneficial bacteria then to it? Yes, yes. And uh, the other the, the other conversation we're going to have in a minute, I see you, Fish Fam Link. Thank you for coming and promoting the other channels too. I really appreciate you. Check Fish Fam Link out, guys, because you can find advice and channels on everything if you go there. Um, but yeah, the, the next conversation is how you're going to remove the bio balls. So in this case, I think you have such a mature system and you have so few seahorses for the system that you've got mm -hmm. that I don't think, I mean, I'm not worried that you're going to see an ammonia spike, but yes, if you saw an ammonia spike, the two things I would have on hand would be mm -hmm. beneficial bacteria to combat that. Mm -hmm. And of course, prime. Prime, prime yeah. is the, the thing that, you know, makes Does them prime not hurt. expire because I found, I have a bottle of prime and I couldn't find a date on it. Okay. How long does it last? I thought it had an expiration date, but I looked all over this bottle and I couldn't find one. Let me grab mine. You you keep explaining what you're saying. I'm going to grab mine. Yeah. So my plan is too, because I won't be able to fit all the K1 reactors in that sump unless I remove the bio balls, some of them, a lot of them probably. So I'm thinking what I'll probably do is start gradually pulling some, maybe just a handful every week, like five of them. They're, they're about yay big. So five of them is probably about a handful. Do you think that's too much or about right? Or what would you say? I mean, listen, maybe you're talking. So, so <laughs> no, I'm, I, what I was going to say is you're talking to the girl that lost the largest piece of rock in her tank. <laughs> so I, I think I think that if if I and, pull a handful every week, it's probably not too so bad. So are you saying pull it now as the K one is cycling before Start you add the other K one? Okay. Yes. Then I would do it very slowly. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that the second that you add the reactor from you're 75 to the 55, you're going to be fine, to be honest. Mm -hmm. But I mm -hmm. get what you're saying. You're talking about doing it before the transfer. Yeah, I'd like to so, kind of start because, like I said, they're messy. And they they take a lot of room up in my sump right now. Each tank has a, one of those laundry bags, you know, with all the holes, like a lingerie bag or something. Sure, sure. About this big. So almost two feet long and a foot tall, full of bio balls in each, in each sump. So there's tons of them in each sump. But even though they're in mesh bags, so they all stay together and I can pull them out, you know, and rinse them in dirty tank water to, you know, sure. get the gunk off and put them back in there. But even so, I mean, they're still a pain in the butt. They're still trapping gunk in there. Yep. And they're just a pain in the butt. So I want to get rid of them and gradually move to just K1, but I, I don't want to do it too quickly and leave them without good bio filter. So, so the, the couple things I've got to say is Coral works. I see you out there. I see Kelly Foreman. Hey, any of you guys, have you used bio balls? I honestly never have used bio balls just to be honest, but it is a good method. It used to us be old method. folks. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm old too, but but I'm just saying the advice I'm giving is based on just understanding bacteria. But I've never used bioballs, so if you guys have thoughts, share them for sure. We want to hear your thoughts. I wish Ray would pop in. I hope he does. But in my opinion, I feel like what you're talking about is exactly right. It's a balancing act, right? Mm -hmm. So again. 
if I were you, I would have beneficial bacteria and prime on hand. We're going to talk about the prime in a second. I got my bottle. Um, but I feel like if you add the K1, they say, see, I don't about want to go old school, but because here's the thing. When the I had multiple, I when I had multiple tanks, right? When I had tanks in every room, I literally had a five gallon bucket of K1 that I continued spinning, added ammonia, cycled it, had it ready to go. That's not really a thing for someone with one tank or two tanks, right? Yeah, so, see, in my display tank that's 55 gallon, the K1 I have in there, I actually cycled in a bucket with ammonia to get mm -hmm. it ready to, to move over there. Sure. So I had it not cycling in the tank. I cycled it and then I put it in. So it, it went fairly quickly. But, and I think they even say in this video I shared that if you're just um, adding it to a sump right. and letting it cycle on its own, you can expect it to take like six months to a year. Right. And that that's, totally that's, my, that's my only fear as we're having this conversation, because I remember that, that it takes, K1 will take a really long time if you don't cycle it on the side, because your system is already working right yeah so you add k1 it's not going to instantly grow bacteria to combat everything that's going on in the tank because mm -hmm. it, the tank's already working so um i think your plan to do it slowly is the right one that's what mm -hmm. i would do mm -hmm. i would add the k1 give it as long as you can give it mm -hmm. and then start taking out a handful of bio balls every you know time you do a water change and just monitoring i mean you have the right plan you're you're absolutely on track that's what i would do um and then just know that when you're ready to move them like because that's the thing it's all this balancing act the second yeah. that you move the other seahorses over and you move their k1 over it'll be fine right mm -hmm. because that's an established k1 reactor that will that's already there right. but it won't be used to that much bio load it won't, you know, but, but you're going to have the other one, right? Yeah. And so, so one question. Hopefully right? that's the plan. So, But I'm question. almost wondering if it might be smarter to pre-cycle it like I did the other one. That way I mean, it's ready. I just pop it in the sump. I mean, yeah, it's kind of a pain, but. To be honest. I mean, not that big a deal. If you're able to do that, that's what I would do. Always, yeah. I would always pre-cycle because then if you and if you don't know what that happens, about, I think it took a month. The other one, like three weeks or something sure. like that, was all. And if you don't know what we're talking about, I will find the video to show you. We're talking about cycling media, say K1 or even rock whatever, in a bucket using ammonia and using testing kits to find out when it has grown the bacteria you need in order to handle the bio load of a tank, right? And so what she's saying is if I stick this K1 in my sump and just let it cycle itself, well, nothing it new is forever. happening. So, and yeah, it takes forever. And as she removes bio balls, yes, that will compensate, but she doesn't want to have to deal with any trouble in between, right? Like if, if the K1 is slower than the removal of the bio balls or whatnot. So if you're able to cycle media outside the tank, that's always the best way. Because then you know that it's cycled to handle it's ready one to, to two go. ppm of, you know, ammonia, nitrite, and all the crap, right? Whereas if you're just letting it do it. I've, I've, I know in the UK seahorse group, they talk a lot about sticking sponges in sumps. Because then you can start a new take with a with a sponge from a previous sump. And I, I have, always feel like I have those have I have those not for starting tanks per se, but I have them more for emergencies. Like if we need to evacuate and I need to take the seahorses 
So they'll have some biofilter in their buckets because they'll probably have to live in buckets for a while and yep. bubble, air, yep. bubblers and all that. So it's it's more like kind of an emergency thing. Security. Thing. No, and I think I, I'm not trying to say it's it, it's a very smart move. Or if it's a tank fails smart. and I need to keep them in a 10 gallon for a while or whatever. Or if it's you have to medicate or anything. There's so many reasons. Having a backup plan is always a good plan, right? So I, I'm not trying to say keeping sponges in the sump to use for whatever methods is a bad idea. It's a terrific idea. I do it myself when I'm not being lazy. <laughs> but the thing is, I'm hesitant to ever say it's okay to start a tank with them. Because the bio load's going to be different, right? And mm -hmm. if you have a sponge in the sump that's gaining beneficial bacteria for sure and going to be helpful in every way, but it's not up to speed. It's not going to handle have, the whole tank. You yeah. have everything. But it'll else. handle a bucket in an emergency. Yes, like absolutely. I'm saying. <laughs> absolutely. So, so to just round this out back to the actual question, I would say if you're able to cycle your media outside the tank, that is the best method because then you're sure you just know it can handle the tank period. Mm -hmm. Right. You don't have to wonder if you cannot, then I would say the slow method that Holly was talking about by gradually exchanging a few bio balls a week and then, you know, test to see, okay, mm -hmm. everything's fine. All right. So it's, it's, it's coming up. It's, it's, because K1 does take a minute to cycle if it's just set into a tank. Mm -hmm. You, I should, I, I'm going to try to remember you guys. Somebody remind me. I'll post a picture of my K1 now. It is freaking disgusting. And Mine it's amazing. Oh, it's amazing and disgusting. Mine is all brown. <laughs> and that's how you want it. And the whole point of K1, in case anybody new out there is like, what the heck's K1? We're talking about using it as a media in a two liter or one liter or a reactor um, because if you have that tumbling constantly, what mm -hmm. it does is it knocks around, a, you know, like it's bumping into each other as it tumbles around. And so it knocks off what it doesn't need. And then the bacteria keeps what it does need. And it's just, it's, it's an amazing method. Um, oh, Shyla, nice to see I'm you, so sorry. Glad more. you could join sorry. us a little while. Yes, Sounds like the babies are doing well. And that's so amazing, they Shyla. Good, I'm too. so happy that you're doing so well um, and that the babies are doing so well. We need to like find a way to get you in here one week. I know you got to work and such, but or do a pre-done video. Hello, Ray. Welcome. Hi, Hi Ray. How's it going? The game's not going well. They're in the process of losing their fifth game in a row. That's not good. And this is the last game of regular season. Saturday, they start the playoffs. Oh, but they're still in the playoffs? Sorry? I don't know how it works. Are they still in the playoffs even if they lose? To okay. Oh, yeah. Good. They finished third in their division. Okay, so good. Um, Saturday, they play against Boston Bruins. Well, I'm glad you... The only problem is uh, Boston always beats them. Gotcha. Well, I I, I have no comments because I don't know the teams, but I'm sorry your team is losing. Hey, Ray, real quick on the side, have you spoken to Cheryl lately? No. Nope. Okay. I'm going to reach out to her. They were asking about Cheryl, and uh, we, we need to reach out to her. Second question, what we were talking – I think she just got tired. I know. And she's got, a, you know, she, her son, she's got stuff going on. I get it. I don't, ex I'm not being expectant. I'm just, we're just, we want to make sure she's okay. Um, but I did want to ask too, what we were just talking about is Holly. We talked last week about Holly's going to combine tanks eventually. And so while she yep. gets in that process, she's going to start, she got her K1 in. And she's going to start a K1 it's reactor. It's coming. They ordered it. It's on the oh, way. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Not so here she, yet. But she's going to, She. the whole question is, if it were you and your tanks, would you pre-cycle K1 media or would you just let the tank cycle it? 
Uh, it's, I yeah. Michael. See, I, I feel like if I you're able, if just you're as able, that way, if I do some, so, you know, so, suddenly lose somebody, I'd just be ready to go and not yeah. have to wait. And you'd have the K1 media reactor ready to where you could literally remove there. the bio balls yeah. completely, put the two K1s in. But I do know, again, that a lot of people mm -hmm. out there don't have multiple tanks can't pre-cycle media that's like foreign to them they're like what are you, i'm gonna set up a bucket and what that's, that's <laughs> well you should either. see my house there's buckets everywhere already right. one more bucket isn't gonna hurt anything <laughs> right oh and by the way speaking of right. buckets i did get rid of all my salt buckets at the home and garden show when i had my booth for Ooh, my insurance business nice. i don't think i told you that but i just asked people as they were walking by and the last two i gave to um uh there was a few ladies from AAA in the booth next to me and one of them she's all i live on a 17 acre ranch i could always use buckets so the ones that were left she could she took <laughs> who doesn't want big old buckets man I, I love them. <laughs> right but but that's cool um so what else did we have to ask Ray? I'm sorry, my daughter just just. Oh, so me. I was just. Oh yeah, first about the bio balls. I'd like to gradually start getting rid of them. So I was, I was thinking if I pulled out maybe like three or five every week, or something so, for a while, so, do it that wait, way. Wait, let's to make give more room in my sump. But let's give him the background. Ray, what she's wanting to do is she's going to wait till she gets her K1. She's going to make her little uh, homemade reactor. She's going to put it in the sump, which what we were just discussing is maybe she'll pre-cycle. But if someone couldn't do that and they wanted to switch from bio balls to K1, she's going to put her K1 in. It can take up to six months to be fully effective for the tank. And if the bio balls are still doing their job, it's not really growing at the pace you'd want it to. So is there any equation or math that would say you remove this much and it's still safe? No. No, I didn't no. think so. So what would you do? Well, first of all, because it, like we keep on harping, every tank sure. is different. Every system is different. Sure. So you, you, there's no way that you can come up with any formula. But the thing is, uh, there's a lot of ways that you can do it. If, like you can do it, uh, you can make the change all of a sudden and keep an eye on things. And while well, you people talk prime, I talk four. Right. Uh, but I told you before, I cycled a, uh, a tank here for the uh, Barbary. And uh, I put them in the same day I started the tank. Right. And we don't want to, we don't want to, nobody knew do that. Please don't do that. <laughs> no, but the thing is, it is possible. It is. Now in her case, it's not going to, she wouldn't be starting over uh, completely fresh. She would have a system that's already generating there. She's just adding more bile load to it. So the additional bile load may be able to be handled just with what's in the system now. But if it's not, she has the choice of uh, uh, take or uh, adding a, a, a pre-charged K1 reactor or uh, so, uh, putting, in, putting in one that isn't pre-charged, but uh, be ready with uh, your prime in case uh, um, any ammonia shows up. So when up. I said that, I said uh, that, but I, I guess what I'm getting at is if someone has been keeping bio balls in their tank, let's let's not even take Holly's situation. Let's just say we had somebody call in or whatever, and they said, I hate my bio balls. They suck. I want rid of them. I want to switch to K1. I'm not able to pre-cycle it. Like, I don't want to set up a bucket and do all that work. So I want to add my K1 reactor and I want to know, aside from just testing the tank as I go and having Prime or Chloramax on hand, is there anything else I can do to kind of figure out that balance? How much I can take out as the K1 grows? You know what I mean? 
And it's a tough question. I know it's green, but uh, I don't have yeah. an answer for you. I have no way <laughs> okay. to know. Okay, all right. I just wanted to make sure there wasn't some documentation. <laughs> but no. And it, there, listen, there's too many people that are getting into this hobby or looking for something right. easy. You've been in a long time. And you're still looking for something hey. easy. <laughs> it's <laughs> never <laughs> easy. <laughs> I am always looking for easy and it never is. And I get it. I know. But I just, I, I, I have to ask the question so we can answer them, you know? And, and I mean, Holly's not trying to do the easy way. It is better always to pre-cycle the media, but I just think, I mean, I've done tanks where it was an emergency and something happened and I had to set up a brand new tank, whether it be for new seahorses or, you know, for an arrival where a tank crashed or whatever. I've had many experiences where I had to do something in a day. And like you were saying, Ray, it's possible, but the best way for newcomers that haven't kept seahorses and don't know how to read them and, you know, get to know them and figure out what, when something's wrong, the best way is to be preventative, set it up right to begin with, and then, you know, don't have those problems where you have to figure it out in a half a second and, you know, have prime on hand. Um, I did want but to go in back. In my home. case, what I'd, what I'd rather do just to make it easy is have the K1 reactors pre-cycled in a bucket like I did with the other one and just throw it in the sump and it's ready to go. And then gradually, like I was saying, take out the bio balls and it's probably fine on its own, but I don't want to take the chance and then have to deal with all the prime the and, and stuff. So I'd rather just know. And my other one, I probably could just start taking them out because it's got, it's a 55 gallon and it's got the K1 reactor and all those bio balls. Well, and I was going to say, Holly, in that tank, you'll probably just experience possibly a massive bacterial bloom like I did when I lost the <laughs> rock, but it goes away in a few days and it's fine, right? I mean, like, it's not a yeah. crisis. I tested the tank the whole time. They were fine. The water was fine. It was just that there was all this excess stuff that there was no big rock to or bio balls to handle, but it yeah. just, you know, dissipated and went away, you know, as as the bacteria realizes we're not needed anymore, they just kind of, <laughs> you know, you, you need to do water changes eventually. Yeah. But yeah, I'm probably not saying it very well or scientifically, but I'm just telling you guys, it's not the end of the world. And oh, you seen my water change today. I did a deep cleaning on my 75 gallon, like spring cleaning, you might say. And it grows like a... Um, like a film algae and sure. I couldn't, I could not get it off with the magic eraser. It was so <laughs> bad. So I had to scrub with an algae scrubber Ooh. So hard on that algae. I didn't get all of it off, but I got most of it off. It looks a lot better, but it looked like a swamp in there for a while. And it looks all bright, sparkly and squeaky clean again right now. But but I have a new background coming besides the K1 I've got. Because what I used on the tank, actually, it's wrapped with that silver, um, like, insulation you buy at Home Depot. Okay. It's kind of okay. a roll. It's silver, and it's like a little, like, bubble wrap almost. Sure. So I cut it to fit my tank. And then over that, I taped on blue wrapping paper. Oh, gotcha. From the dollar store. Yeah. And it's been on there for years. So it's gradually lost its color and faded and time for a change. All creep and all that. And then yep. algae grew over it inside the tank. So it's looking drab. So I bought them an actual aquarium. Back background piece and it's like it's an underwater like they're like, gonna be trying to hitch to, they're gonna be trying to hitch it, to the back <laughs> well it doesn't have stuff it's sand and blue water oh, so it's God. it's almost like when you go to the 
Caribbean, you know, and it's white mm. sand on the bottom of the sea and then really blue water and it's got sunlight streaming through. Yeah. So it should be here the next couple of days. So then I'm going to put that on and see what algae stands out <laughs> in front of right. it. <laughs> and and I, I just want to say this real quick. You guys don't forget that in the worst of my tanks, when, when <laughs> my mom passed, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to read Ray's comment in a minute and Cora works his comment. But when my mom passed and my 65 gallon got, I mean, it was, you couldn't see in the tank because there was green hair algae everywhere. And when I finally got up off my ass and said, I got to fix this, there are seahorses in there. I was still feeding them and et cetera, but I just wasn't taking care of them because I was depressed and whatever. And then you know, I cleaned it up and it was sparkling and new and they kind of were like, what the hell? And I asked Dan, I was like, why are they acting weird now? And he said, you don't understand. That's their natural environment. They live in swampy <laughs> yeah, lagoons. They, yeah. they just thought they were back home and now you've invaded again and you've made it clean and now they can see your big face again. <laughs> So I, I'm not saying anything bad about it either way. I'm just, and you should never let your tank get to that point. I'm just saying it can work. And I did want to say before I forget, um, oh, God, now I'm going to forget. Zen Ginger. I wanted to say something to Zen Ginger. Ah, uh, It'll come to me later. But I've got a comment for you, Zen, because I know you're, you're right there. You're about to set up. And there was something I wanted to say about what we were talking about. Anyways. It'll come back to me. Hey, let's go to Coral Works said, can you start a bucket of K1 with an air stone and move the bio balls into that bucket as you remove them and swap the K1 in? Allow some of the bacteria to migrate or colonize otherwise. Thoughts, Ray? Well, there's a lot of things you can do, including right. that. But it's just, you know, you pick the way that's going to work for best for you and uh, the seahorses that you have and uh, and what you're actually going to or what you're wanting to accomplish. Um, and you can do uh, methods that are going to be faster than others. Uh, again, it, it's just a personal choice for so much of this. Uh, I don't have any arguments with uh, any of the ways that people are doing anything, but I personally wouldn't because I would never use K1. But, uh, See? And, and we've got a no, a no K1 guy. So w real quick, I want to say to Coral Works, your method that you're describing is not bad, but why? So what I'm saying is if you're going to set up a bucket anyways, why not just use ammonia and have like a whole pure it's just you know, easier system instead way. of transferring anything that might be in the bio balls to... The tank, but I mean that's just my thoughts. But Ray, why don't you like K1? Well, it's not a case of don't like it. I uh, I'm a cheap bugger and I can't see spending money for something that I have no need of. Um, okay. Twenty odd years ago, uh, when I started, well, actually, I guess we gotta go back thirty years. Uh, I had bio balls back then. And uh, I had live rock. And then when I started looking at the Berlin system um, for reefing, basically they were just using live rock. They had no bile balls or anything else. So I yanked the bile balls, and I've probably still got a few five gallon buckets of them down in the basement. But mm -hmm. uh, I've used live rock for everything ever since. As a matter of fact, the same, I'm still using this for up until last year when I shut things down. And uh, I still have in the basement all this live rock that I had back 30 years ago. And I've been using it ever since. So if you have something already, sure. and if it's working, why buy something else? And that's totally, why totally. I use the bio balls because they came, I inherited my tank, the 55 gallon I inherited from a friend who was keeping freshwater fish and it had a bio ball trickle filter. 
Mm -hmm. So I had the bio balls. They came with the, so that's what I I use. I mean, I'm totally with you. Use what you got, but I want to get to Bonnie's question after Mm -hmm. Cora works is because it's really important. Mm -hmm. And I totally agree, Ray, with what you just said. If what you have is working, work it. I mean, don't change Mm -hmm. it. Never change it. Never go buy some new thing because it's the new thing. If your system is working, leave Mm -hmm. it alone. In my case, I've had tremendous trouble with live rock. We've mm-hmm. talked endlessly. You just described that you've had it for so many years. Um, I don't know if you keep it, how you keep it, how you keep the rock. But like for a long time when I had multiple tanks, I was keeping a brute 35, 32 gallon brute tote or a, you know garbage pail or whatever you call it full of rock and water and making sure it churned. And we're going to get to Bonnie's question about the confusion, but Coral work said, so are y'all wasting money on fishless cycle? Do you use fish food or do you use unscented laundry ammonia? What is the fish fight fish fishless cycle? Let's say real quick. And then we're going to Bonnie's great question. Well, for myself, I use a real cheap bottle of, ammonia just plain ammonia unscented yeah that's just as plain as you can get as cheap as you can get (laughs) and i i really do guys i know i always say i have a video and then i don't share it i will find it and share it because this is really important but the fishless cycle actually i think it's in the big long how to set up a seahorse tank i think i show you know how to do fishless cycle i show it on a a barrel of rock but it's the same for K1. The only mm-hmm. difference with like K1 is you have to keep it tumbling. But even it, when mm-hmm. you're doing rock, you want to have air circulate, you know, the mm-hmm. water circulating, moving. And it's literally just adding ammonia until you reach 2 p. I say 2 ppm. Daniel it's cycling one. what? 2 ppm in 24 hours, right? Right. So I basically you add the ammonia, right, to make it really simple. You add ammonia, you test. Oh, it's at 1 ppm. You add more ammonia, you test. It's at 2 ppm. Then you're good. You leave it alone. You let it sit. You let it cycle. You're measuring for ammonia and see how long it takes to get rid of it. Dan, I don't even do that. I wait 24 hours and I see if it worked. If it didn't work. Well, it's usually more than 24 hours. (laughs) <laughs> it's usually days <laughs> in my experience. So that's but why still I you have saying. to test it along the way and add bacteria and all that. So, right. And there is a Dr. Tim's actually, uh, I can post that too. Like a day three, you add this much. Day five, I can't tell you that, you know, off the top of my hat, but I can tell you, I would get the ammonia to 2 ppm test it in 24 hours. Then I would follow his script as far as when to add bottle bacteria, when to add whatever, and then test until it can completely convert 2 ppm of ammonia in 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Um, That's, that's, that's the answer to that. But um, she said, I guess I'm confused, but couldn't you just had added bottle bacteria for salt water and add it to the reactor in the bucket with ammonia as feed for the BB. Right. That's, that's Mm -hmm. what we're talking about. That's what we're saying. Exactly. No, you're absolutely right. So I don't know where the confusion went in. Um, Ray's talking about ammonium chloride powder and Ray has had to do things differently because he's in Canada. So he can't get some of the things that we can get. Right. So different Mm -hmm. methods, but if you're, that's not the reason for most of my methods. Okay. Tell me the reason. Well, I could get, I could buy ammonia back then, uh, no problem. I bought this bottle of ammonium chloride powder. I got, went to the pharmacy and I asked them to get in for me. And it was just a little wee tiny bottle. Uh, I guess liquid wise, it might only hold two or three ounces. And, uh, uh, that ammonium chloride, I still have some left in the bottle now. And uh, when you're looking at the fact that I've had uh, roughly a thousand gallons of tanks on the go for uh, 20 odd years until I started cutting back on the reefs and everything, you know, 
it that was a pretty economical way to do it. You didn't have to worry about knocking a bottle over and breaking it and losing yeah. so, it. So tell me tell me real quick the method for um using the ammonium chloride powder because I never have. So it's I don't, exactly I don't even know. it's exactly the same as using the pure ammonia, your liquid okay. ammonia. You put in a little bit of powder and uh, until it gets okay. up to your two parts per million. But if I've had times uh, like my abs tank, when I started that one up, uh, I had, uh, I think it was eight abs coming in in a 90 gallon tank. So uh, I boosted it to six parts per million. And once it was able to clear six overnight, then I knew it would handle that kind of loading. Um, if I just did for two parts per million, there's no way that uh, I could be sure that that was going to take care of the abs, putting them in all at once. So, no, that's a great point because mm -hmm. Dan and I always argued about that too. He always said, if you're just setting up a basic seahorse tank with a couple of seahorses and you're following the other rules, you can cycle media up to one part per million. And he's not wrong. If you're setting up a 30 gallon with two seahorses, you, you know, one part per million will cover it. But how do you like gauge that? Because I always wanted to go overboard. I would rather have my media so cycled that, you know, it could handle anything. And then if it couldn't, yeah, I'd have a bacterial bloom, but whatever, my seahorses would be fine. What are well, your thoughts? Is, well, that's a good question though. Like if it doesn't need, like if your tank doesn't need the whole four or six parts per million, is it going to naturally drop down? Yes. Only two have a because it's blood. not being fed enough. Gotcha. Right. The, the yeah, I, regret, I have no way to know how much I was tank. going to need when I put those uh, eight dabs in. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, I would rather err. You'd rather be over than under. under. I get it. And yeah. like, I could find no way, no formula at all to tell me how much I was actually going to need. And right. Uh, Course, that uh, makes sense. Um, you know, experience show, showed me that there, there just aren't magic formulas. And I proved right. that myself yeah. when I had uh, four separate tanks set up for barbs. And they're all identical. Same power head, same filtration, same everything. And uh, every, every one of those four, well, there was two tanks that were fairly similar. But the other two were uh, completely different from them. And I'd split up the uh, Barbary so there was only two to a tank. And these were 40 gallon tanks with a sump. Um, but the, uh, I guess the starting point was the fact that each pair of those seahorses were different. I had to feed them different. Uh, mm -hmm. some, some ate more than others. So that meant uh, uh, that each each of those tanks had to be handled different. Now, uh, I could base uh, some of what I was doing and is going for, say, the tanks that I had to feed the least to. Um, I could use them to gauge how much extra to do for the uh, tanks that I was feeding more. I knew I had but no, to. But no, you're that. you're making you're making a great point, Ray. It does depend on how much the seahorses eat and how much you have to feed them and how much yep. you're adding to the tank. No, great point. Um, so yeah, and it doesn't hurt to be over, but it will hurt to be under. <laughs> so, well, so if you're I, I, over, it's not a bad thing. It'll just balance out over time. It'll balance out, but you're going to see a bacterial bloom. I guarantee it. It's happened to me every time. Has that ever happened to you, Ray? What's that? A Where bacteria. if you overcycle the tank, say, or overcycled media, and then you add it to a tank, and it, it the bacteria is just not needed, you get a bacterial bloom. I've never had that happen. Really? See, uh, well, it's happened to me every time. I guess I have bad luck. But in the my one case, thing that uh, while we were talking about uh, feeding different amounts, a lot of people don't realize. That many of their seahorses, when they're uh, pregnant, for instance, the males and that, become very reclusive and they don't eat as much. Mm -hmm. So if they're feeding the tank the same amount, then they're e either they're going to have to clean out a lot more at that point in time, or 
they're going to end up, if they're leaving it in there, then uh, they're going to end up with the possibility of bacterial problems uh, occurring down the road from when you're you're doing this overfeeding. And there are times when um, I had seahorses that weren't even pregnant, but they went through spells when they wouldn't eat as much as others. Mm -hmm. Now, it may be because I had so many seahorses and so many tanks, and uh, so I became aware of the differences in that. So maybe if you've only got one tank and a certain amount of seahorses, you might not notice that so much. I notice it, and I have a question. I notice, yes. Hang on. I have a question real quick about my actual tank right now. I haven't given you guys an update. I'm going to get to Zen Ginger's next question or, or thought in just a second. But let's go to me. <laughs> um, so I hey, told quickly, you guys, I've got to go back to the game. Quickly. So I told you guys that I saw them do an egg exchange. I know what it looks like. Mm -hmm. I know what the male looks like after he gets the eggs and he goes and does the squirmy thing to get them all comfortable. I swear to God they did an egg exchange. My male, look, it's been, what, two weeks? Mm -hmm. He looks, he doesn't look pregnant to me. But they're not flirting. He is very reclusive. And I've noticed what you're saying, Ray, where he's not eating the same. So I, I'm not worried. I really think he's pregnant. I just think it's a first pregnancy. I think he's. Uh, if, there's no way in two weeks that he shouldn't be showing. Well, the scrappy do never looked pregnant to me. I'll have to he caught me by surprise every time. I, the only way I can see it is if it was a partial exchange and there's maybe only 10 or 15, 20. Uh, well, that's what I'm there. thinking. And I've also, you know, I've also actually experienced where in a very, the very first pregnancy, they'll absorb the eggs and, you know, like <laughs> no babies, like they, they literally absorb them yeah. and use them as nutrient for themselves. And then they don't need to eat because they're full of nutrients from their possible fry. That's terrible. Anyway, I'm sorry, you guys. I gotta run, so I'll be back after the game's over. But wait, my All question right. was, wait, Ray, one more question. My question was, if your male is not eating because he's pregnant or whatever, do you just feed less? Yep. All right, mm -hmm. that was my answer. That's what I needed. All right, go, okay. go watch your game. Have a good game. Right. Yes. And no, and that's what I'm dealing with, guys. I didn't give you an update. I keep saying I will, and then I didn't. Um, I'm telling you, I know what this looks like. I've seen it before so many times. And I swear they did an egg exchange. And he just, and maybe I'm over, you know, looking. He, he's fat. He just doesn't look pregnant to me. And there's a pregnant look. I'll have to post pictures and you guys can tell me what you think. Oh, was it? You know, it was Sandy. Yeah, Sandy never looked pregnant to me. He caught me by surprise every single time. But he only, he only had one really big batch. Most of his yeah. batches were small. So maybe he's just going to have a small batch. Yeah. I'm, well... We'll see. We'll see. I'll post. Especially I'll since it's his first time. Right. And that's, that's, that's the key to letting you guys know if you're trying to be breed uh, seahorses and your pair finally hooks up and things don't go as planned. Don't get discouraged. I'm not going to, they're finally doing it. Right. I'm just excited. Um, but I'm not expecting fry tomorrow because I know that the first batch, I mean, I've never, the only, I've only kept one seahorse fry alive out of a first batch. I know some of you guys have had better experiences and that's great, but in my case, and I didn't know anything back then. I know a lot more now, but I'm just saying, I'm not going to beat myself up if this doesn't turn out to be what I want it to be because it is what it is, you know? Um, and Jumping back, way back, I'm looking at my prime bottle. Oh, yeah. Did you find a date? I do not see a date. So that's a really interesting question. I'm going to have to contact the company. Oh, wait. Is this? No, that's not it. That's yeah, I found some numbers, but yeah, they were not the date. 
they and don't I've make had, sense. I know I've had mine for a while, so I'm like, huh, I wonder if it's still good or not, and I have no way to tell. I mean, I feel like if I, I know, like on the you. dechlorinator that I use for my freshwater tank, it has a date on it. Right. So uh, I'm thinking if it does that. I mean, if it's a chemical, I'm thinking it's got to have an ex expiration, but it's odd that it doesn't have it on the bottle because most things do that have a date to use it. Right. By. So let, let me contact. I, know. I, will, <laughs> I, I will reach out to the company to get an exact answer. I've never honestly worried enough about Prime. I've never had it long enough to worry about it. So I, I get the question. And I don't want to say the wrong thing and give out bad information. I kind of feel like I don't know. I'm not even going to say that. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. contact the company and then I will get back to you next week. Um, and then let's move forward. Uh, Zen Ginger said, I always did the ghost feeding, feed the amount for the fish that I planned on having and did the regular water changes as if they were already there until everything was balanced. What are your thoughts on that? Holly. I've never done it that way. Yeah, I never have. Even with my, my freshwater fish. It's interesting. Well, because this is the first freshwater fish tank. I've kept freshwater fish for many, many years. And I don't remember ever really cycling a tank until after I had the seahorses. This is the freshwater tank. I've had that I've cycled the other ones. I didn't do anything fancy to cycle it. I, I just made sure there wasn't ammonia in it, I think. And like our goldfish, we just throw them in a tank of water. None of my freshwater fish have ever been delicate enough that I even needed to cycle a tank. Oh, I've, Holly. <laughs> I've never had yeah, we've always just got fish and we never lost any of them other than when the fire came and we had to evacuate. So I've I mean, never that's had good. a problem, but I've never had fancy freshwater fish. I've had goldfish and, right, and plasmus I mean, and things like that. And we had, you know, the hang on back filters and gravel and and things like that. I just never had a problem. But when I set up this freshwater tank, I learned to cycle from doing saltwater tanks. Right. Because, so because I used here, it, what I learned on the saltwater tank on the freshwater tank and just used ammonia. And, and that's awesome because here's the learning experience for anyone out there that sees this is that, yeah, there are some tough fish out there that can withstand the cycling process, mm -hmm. but it's it's not very nice to the fish, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm not giving you a hard time, mm -hmm. Holly, because you didn't know. I mean, mm -hmm. my first And the fish time, didn't ever have a problem. It was just, we never kept fancy, expensive fish. They were always right. really hardy, throw them in, in, a, in a tank and go fish. <laughs> many, many pet stores use hardy fish like mm -hmm. to start up sumps and etc. I'll be honest with you guys. My first reef, I literally did it by adding two damsels. That's how I cycled. And that's terrible and it makes me feel how so bad. I did my first saltwater tanks, but that that's how they told us to do it back right, in the 80s. Right. <laughs> but, now, but now we know better. Now we yep. know that it is hard on the fish, even if they don't show it, just because they can withstand it doesn't mean it's the right way to do it, right? So let's cycle our tanks. And back to the actual ghost feeding method, Here's, and I know there's some really popular videos, amazing, you know, Me Loves Reef talks about throwing a shrimp in a tank. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that can't work. What I'm saying is when you're dealing with, Holly just said the key, what mm -hmm. kind of fish are you keeping? If you're setting up a reef tank and it's more about coral and it's more about hardy fish and, you know, you don't add the tanks till it's cycled and blah, 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 blah. That's a different situation. With seahorses, 
to try to like use a shrimp or something or ghost feeding the tank to cycle it for seahorses will not work. I'm just, if it's worked for somebody out there, good for you. I would never advise someone to use that method. It's old and we found better ways, right? Mm -hmm. So if you cycle the tank or the media with ammonia, you have to think if you throw a piece of shrimp in there and we're worried about organics and I'm talking about a human piece of shrimp, like what yeah. we would eat. Table shrimp, like, they call it. Mm -hmm. Table shrimp. You got to, what's coming off of that? What, what organics is that creating? Right? So if it's worked for you, cool. But on this channel, I would never advise using that method to start a tank or to even, and there are, there are delicacies here. Like if you're talking about quarantining macros, where you have to make sure that there's no aptasia, I will ghost feed with frozen mices, but I, I, and I'm not beating up on anybody here. I'm just trying to make the point that if you're cycling a tank, please don't use the ghost feeding method. Please don't use the hardy fish method. If you're dealing with seahorses because they need the tank set up right before they enter it. And that's what Holly's so concerned about is making sure that this tank is compatible for, uh, you know, more seahorses because they just are, uh, it's so hard because we say they're delicate, mm -hmm. but they're not, they're yeah, very they're hard, pretty hard, but it, but when it comes to bacterial stuff, they're sensitive. To avoid to that. Yes. Yeah. So avoid bacterial stuff by making sure your bacteria is aces and then you will never have trouble with seahorses, I guess is my point. I know I just rambled and went all around the circle and didn't really make a point, but I don't know. Don't use fish or real food to cycle a tank, cycle it with ammonia. It's a better method. I promise you, mm -hmm. you'll be so much happier. You did because then you know that the tank can withstand. And it's easier to do. And, it's and actually with, easier. Once I discover that method, I'll never go back. It's so right. easy. It's not just easier, but it's also that, you know, like literally by parts per million, you know, this tank can handle what you're going to feed the seahorses instead of, you know, that shrimp made it not show ammonia, but, uh, you know, once we start throwing in shrimp to feed the seahorses, is it really going to be able to handle that? It's just, yeah. So that was my, I'm going to, I'm done rambling. I hope I did make a point that somebody got. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, okay. Why are you using a reactor? Is there not a sump on this tank? Having a whole chamber of the sump ded <laughs> dedicated to K1 is better usage. I can tell you because I'm wanting to avoid the issue I have with bio balls floating around and they're not being contained. <laughs> That's right. the whole point. So they Control. go in a two liter bottle. They're nicely contained. You can take them, swap them out. You're not ever fishing them out of the sump or craziness. Like the bio balls, I have them contained now too, but they used to just be sitting in the sump and what a mess that was. So right. I put them into, like I said, a lingerie laundry bag you know, just to keep them together so that when I want to clean them, I pull them out and I can swish them around in a bucket of dirty tank water to get all the loose crap off of them. But the bio balls stay, or not the bio balls, the K1 stays clean. It's all just nice and clean, tumbling round and round inside of that two liter bottle, you know, instead of sitting there or having to throw air airlines in your sump and all that. Oh. Yeah, what a mess. I'm trying to get away from the mess, not like, and can you imagine little, t like the bio balls are bad enough, but K1's tiny. I can't right. imagine all those tiny little things floating loose in my sump. <laughs> no, I'm with you. And I would, I would actually add to that. Um, like in my case, uh, Coral Works in the 40 gallon on one, there is no sump. So I have to make do mm -hmm. with the compartments at the back of the tank, but I don't think I do. I've seen like, um, the DIY King Joey met him too. He's really mm -hmm. cool in person. He comes off cocky online. He's not, he's really nice. But anyways, I've seen the things he's done for like his stingrays mm -hmm. and all that stuff. 
that's massive. That's overkill in my opinion. If you want to do something like that, cool, but it's maintaining it, like Holly's talking about. Like mm -hmm. it's just so much easier to have it. And in one in one case, in my case, one of my K1 reactors, and I, when I say reactors, guys, I'm talking about literally either a two liter or one two liter. liter bottle. Bottle. Yeah. yeah, they're homemade. And so I say reactor, it's really not. But in one of them, it got completely covered like the holes got covered with algae seems like a simple fix right mm -hmm. but once the algae gets into those crevices and those holes of the bottle oh it's a mess it never <laughs> ends it never ends and it's so much easier if you can just do a new bottle grab another two liter, liter and bottle and throw them in it <laughs> right and that's, I mean, that doesn't make sense, like, as you're talking about, if you just filled a portion of the sump with it, but it's just, it's just ease of use. That's, that's what it is. Um, I think anybody that does do a complete chamber to K1, I mean, magical, that's amazing. Yeah, you know, and if you're going to stick to bottles. Yeah, because yeah, I, could, I couldn't, I could keep it tumbling. I mean, that's I could see it getting thing. Stuck in the corners of the sump or you know something it's all congealed together because the bio balls will do that so i can I imagine say, the k1 it can and i was gonna say the first time i set up uh the tubs for the fry right mm -hmm. the first time i did i followed dan's instructions and etc the only thing i didn't do the way he told me to do was i didn't have a container for that a container to the right specs that he said for K1. So mm -hmm. I ended up using like literally like a Tupperware, right? Mm -hmm. And I just put K1 in and it was full and it literally filled one portion of the sump. Mm -hmm. And first of all, I had trouble because I'm cheap and the um, the power to the airlines, like the, what do you call them? Um, oh, your you air them? pump? Air pumps, yes. The air pumps kept stopped. They kept stopping, stopping working on me, and then mm -hmm. trying to get the airlines in the perfect position to where it would keep that whole thing tumbling. That's a lot of power. That I'm I'm going the easy route. So again, you're not wrong. It's a really great method to make mm -hmm. sure that your tank is compensated for. But mm -hmm. I'm going the easy route. Go ahead, Holly. No, I was just agreeing with you. On the, oh, okay. I thought you had yeah. to say something. Right. <laughs> I'm just trying uh, to get away from the whole messiness of the bio balls, yeah. really, is what it right. is. <laughs> I hate right. those and things. I think, I think you have a good plan either way, whether you and if do the bio balls could go in a giant chamber next to the sump and cycle the way the K1 does, it would be fine, but... Right. They're not because they're big. So they're sitting in the sump in the way and getting yucky. It, listen, if I could do what Reef Dudes does and have like huge, you know, <laughs> yeah, sure. But, you know, for the average person, we want a simple answer. So we're just trying to give out the a simple, answer. cheap answer. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, and, and Zen Ginger, speaking of which, uh, said... Have you heard of aquarium vinyl? Oh, I had not. And you can get them personalized. <gasps> I could get like a, a Seahorse Whisperer logo. get a Seahorse Whisperer one. Oh, yeah, that'd be shit. cool. Oh, that would be cool. All right. Uh, and let's see. Uh, let's talk a little bit. We're, we're coming to the close, guys. We really are. But... I understand the concept behind battle bacteria, but I've never gotten over the fact that it's still anoxic and possibly not kept at proper temps. Thoughts, Holly? Well, I had a bottle expire on me once, so you have to okay. watch that because I had planned on using it, you know, for something and then didn't get around to using it. I had it in the refrigerator i think and then i pulled it out one day and happened to look at the date and it was long expired so yeah you pretty much i think have to get it when you need it and it's expensive so you don't want to waste it and not use it <laughs> so 
Right. Yeah, and it's, it's kind of one of those things you can't really just keep it on hand. At least I wouldn't. I agree with that. And I was trying to think of the brand that uh, Cheryl loves. It's Fritz uh, Turbo Start, Fritz, I think. That's it. That's and that's it. the one that I had that expired on me. And it cost a fortune. I'll say that. I was so, like, oh, man, this expired and I spent all this money on it. And <laughs> and then I ended up buying a cheap bottle of something from Petco and it worked just fine. <laughs> so for and I was using it for the ammonia in the bucket thing. So I wasn't putting it in my fish tank. I was doing the K1 in a bucket. So Right. And again, so the worst would have happened would it, it wouldn't work and I would have had to buy something else. Right. But it did work. So it was all right. But so, originally I had the expensive stuff and I figured out, well, you want to buy it when you're going to use it and use it before it expires. <laughs> right. No, I will agree with that. And I would say to answer this question on my end, just from my experiences, when I say, oh, if you're in this situation, I would personally keep on hand bottle bacteria and prime. The prime is more important. And we're mm -hmm. going to get an answer to the expiration date. But prime has saved my tank. It already gave us one. It doesn't have an expiration date. There we go. Thank you. Who said uh, that? Yeah. Zen Googled it. All right. Thank you, Zen. I'll still contact the company, but that's, I wanted to say that I, I figured that, but I didn't want to say it, you know, until we had, yeah. but I would say having prime on hand is the key because if something does go wrong, it buys you two days. Right. And that's, you know, that we, we don't want something to go wrong, but I've had so many tanks and so many fish, whether it be discus or seahorses or angelfish that have been saved because I had prime on hand. The only reason I say have bottle bacteria on hand, I want to, I want to go back and re re say that that's not the way to say it, but I agree with Holly. Like that's, if you have prime on hand and you buy yourself two days, then if you figure out that it's a bacterial issue, then go buy bottle bacteria that's fresh and not stored and you know use it i have i will also say i've had different experiences with bottle bacteria i have as ray was pointing out started tanks in a day using bottle bacteria for seahorses okay mm -hmm. i would not advise anyone do that it's very scary and i've also had failures where the stuff didn't work probably because it was expired or didn't keep temp like you yeah. know, we talked about zen ginger so it's a risk. It's always better to do things right, set up properly ahead of time so you don't run into these issues. But when you're combining tanks like Holly is or, you know, you have an emergency, again, having prime on hand is key. And then knowing to go try the bottle bacteria mm -hmm. does sometimes work. If it was me, I would advise Dr. Tim's or Fritz Turbo Start. Mm -hmm. Um, for these situations, but anything else, Holly, that I've missed? Hi, Scott. We're Hello. just gonna talking around. Hi, our aquatic universe with Mike B. And Zen put up a link for the. If I could show it, sorry, uh, for the aquarium vinyl. Man, I'm totally getting one because I love to have the get like a personalized one. And Bonnie said she buys aquarium conditioner um, from Aquarium Coop called Ultimate Ultimate, and no date on their bottle either. So like with aquarium conditioner, I'd really be curious for any of you guys that are joining us. Thanks, Zen Ginger, for bringing mm -hmm. all your friends. But um like, I, I don't have an answer for that. Why or how um, these products cannot have an expiration. I I don't know. I've always just trusted Prime, but I've never kept it, like, for that length of period where I'd be afraid that it would be expired. So I never even checked because I use it too much. 
Yeah, I um, never use it. I just have some for emergencies, but I haven't even opened that bottle and it's been sitting here for years. <laughs> see, but if it hasn't been opened, that matters too. Yeah, it's and never been I, opened. Even though Zen Googled it, I'm still going to contact Prime or Seachem because if you have a bottle that's years old, but it hasn't been opened, I feel like it would still be good. Well, but, and see, yeah, what temperatures they're okay in. Because like right. I've said, my winters get real cold. My summers get real hot. And the temperature in my house fluctuates, you know, from the 50s to the 80s in summer. You know, right. 50 in the winter to 80s, even 90 in summer. So can that affect it or i am making notes right now should we keep it in the refrigerator or is that going to ruin it or does that help it or you know why is there no expiration on prime mm -hmm. how does temperature affect holding should it be a free refrigerated i got it okay i i've got the notes i will absolutely contact them and try to get it from the horse's mouth guys um because i don't know and with water conditioners too bonnie i'm curious why are you um using a water conditioner just out I of use curiosity water conditioner i use it you for do? my tank mm -hmm. when i do the freshwater tank water change because i don't use rodi water ah. because of the ph Gotcha. So I use tap water because it matches the range of pH that they need. And I add uh, a water conditioner to it just a tiny bit. Listen. And like our goldfish, we don't add water conditioner at all. My husband takes care of them and he brings in the hose and fills their yep. tank. <laughs> I was going to say, I remember, so, I remember in Zen, you probably know this feeling. I remember when I was taking care of my prize uh, freshwater angelfish and discus and they were starting to breed and I literally had to do RODI water. So I stripped the water of everything. Then I had to add like a uh, buffer or something. Not, buffer and, and not black water. I'm, I can't think of the word now, but something to make it. Uh, correct it. Yeah, the yeah. alkalinity and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, because the yeah. RODI water does not match what my right. freshwater fish want. So yes. I I give them the tap water matches better. So I give them tap water and just use a little bit of water conditioner in it. Gotcha. And I've done that, and and I've done that in emergencies in every tank. Just to be completely mm -hmm. honest, and just to let you guys know, though. Um, learn your tank right because it depends on your water like for me if i take water out of the tap the tds mm -hmm. is almost 500. yeah yeah whereas with holly it's like 120. 30. Right? no ours yeah. is about 30. i tested it the other oh, day it was 24. see that's ridiculous <laughs> so holly just has a much cleaner water than i do Whereas if she puts her tap water with conditioner in her tank and I put tap water with conditioner in my tank, totally different situation, <laughs> not because of the fish, because my water is shit and it's going to mess up my tanks and add to organics and be just a freaking mess. I hate I water. might not need the water conditioner for the fresh water tank, but I don't know. So I play it on the safe side. So right, you prior to this tank, we never used water conditioner before in any of our freshwater tanks. We just used tap water and never so, had a problem. Ray, welcome back. We were actually talking before you came back about, you know, how people, you, you know, still do keep freshwater fish without any, you know, uh, without worrying about cycling, without worrying about what it's doing to the fish. And then I admitted that I started my reef tank with some, um, oh God, I can't think of it. The black and white striped fish. What are they called, you guys? Um, damsels. Yes, thank you. And which was terrible because you don't realize what it's doing them, what, to them. We've talked about, 
ghost feeding and how it's not the best method, but we kind of came on to this thing. If you're using tap water into a tank, do you need water conditioner? Like you said, uh, you've never used any type of- Well, I had fresh water tanks for over 60 years. Never okay. used a conditioner. And I never used a conditioner in any salt water tank, including all the uh, seahorse tanks. But I did buy uh, an RODI water or uh, filtration system for the seahorse tanks. But for 20 years of salt water before that or so, then uh, I just used tap water. So the first thing I would say, guys, is ask your water company for a water test. Test your own TDF. My TDF uh, on the tap water will uh, run 104 to 120. See, again, you guys, Holly's at 30, uh, Ray's at 100 and something. I'm at 400, almost 500 because of the fact that they run through pipes and whatever. We don't know why, but I'm just saying it's a different situation for him to say, oh, yeah, I just use tap water. No big deal. And me, my when I got a water report because I requested it, it showed arsenic. It showed all this crazy stuff. And I'm like, how is this? And, and we don't drink it just to let you guys know um, we buy bottled water. But I, I wouldn't want to use it on my tanks either. Whereas in their situations, it's a little different, not as big a deal, right? Um, I think Holly's back. Hi, Holly. Yeah. <clears throat> but um, so you, but you, you say you never use conditioner, Ray, but you did keep Chloramax on hand, right? Uh, not until uh, I got into the seahorses. Okay. So what changed that made you start keeping it? Well, I was shipping uh, seahorses, and uh, in my research, I uh, found that uh, the big shippers uh, overseas were using Chloramax uh, as uh, the chemical of choice that worked best for shipping uh, fish over here to the continent here, and uh, with less side effects and less problems. And I don't remember all that I learned at that time now, but it was just the one of choice. So uh, Chloramax is what I bought and that's what I've always used. But did you only use it when you were shipping seahorses or did you use it in emergency situations or in tanks? Never or had an emergency tank. situation, but as I mentioned, I started up a tank. Uh, same day I put the seahorses in, I used the Chloramax. But other, other than the shipping, I didn't have any emergencies that needed it. So gotcha. uh, that wasn't a situation, uh, you know, I, obviously, if that had ar arisen, I would have used it if, when I had it on hand already. Sure. Um, but in uh, 20 years of reefing, uh, I never, ever had any on hand to use. So in the startup tank, I'm just curious, because you have said this before, we've talked about it before, but just, you know, a very slim, uh, short recap of that tank so you use the chloramax you added the seahorses then what right um and, and how few... had you set up the tank prior why did you think you needed the chloramax and what made it all come together well um the tank that i had set up um uh, i can't remember now what there was something that went wrong and I wasn't going to be able to use them. I don't remember now. Like that's twenty odd years. Or, no, that's that was just it's ten. Fine, years ago. I get it. But ahead. anyway, whatever it was, with my memory, I don't remember what the problem was. So I had to set up another tank right off the bat. Mm -hmm. And um, all I did was uh, I had salt water already mixed up because I usually have, uh, I guess, uh, thirty. 40, 50. I usually have about 105 gallons of salt water on hand because I do, I have so many, or I had so many tanks and I did large water changes. Um, and even the stuff that I had on hand, it was mixed stronger. 
and I would have to dilute it down, but it's because I didn't have enough uh, uh, capacity to store uh, water at uh, two four or two six or whatever. Um, yeah, store, no, it becomes difficult to store water for yeah, sure. So I, I would store it in the range of 40 and then uh, dilute it down as I used it with uh, the RODI water for the uh, seahorses. But um, for this particular tank, I, all I did is I filled it up and got all the um, pumps and everything running, got the filters running. I added uh, uh, just a touch of ammonium chloride. Um, so I, I think I, back then, I think I just measured for 0.1, or no, for mm -hmm. one, part, one part per million. Because I yeah. only wanted to uh, get an idea of how much uh, Chloramax to put in. And sure. so I was estimating that I wanted to uh, set up for six parts per million. But I set up, put the ammonium chloride in and got the one part per million and then added ammonium chloride that uh, I weighed out so I knew how much it took to uh, to take care of that uh, one part per million. And then all I did was multiply uh, by five and added a further amount of five into the tank. So, and so that got me quick. started. And Sorry. after our, that starting point, then I just, uh, I would check two or three times a day. I think three times a day I would check at first for checking for ammonia. And if ammonia showed up, then I added more uh, Chloramex. Um, gotcha. And so. then it just got to the point where it was further and further apart having to add that. Uh, um, Chloramax. Chloramax. Yeah. And then, and I don't remember how long it went on now, but it was a couple of weeks before sure. I didn't add any more. Sure. So, so the real question I have for you here about this is because I want to make the point that it really does depend on what's in the tank, right? Because yeah. if you have a tank full of live rock or recycled, hopefully not just live rock you bought, but rock that you've cycled yourself or if you have sand or whatever that bacteria grows faster if you have by the way tank, uh, you were you talking tank, like, i just want before i forget here you were talking yeah. earlier about keeping rock in a container and keeping it aerated or water moving if i wasn't using the rock uh, and going to wasn't going to use it uh, in the very near future I just let it dry out. Well, sure, sure. No, I agree with that 100%. If you're not planning to use it, I'm talking about when I had multiple tanks and I was new. I knew I was constantly moving it around, more. using it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. moving well, it around. I, for this tank that I set up using the Coramex, it was dry rock that I used in that. So right. So that's what I was going to ask you because it does make a difference, right? Like you can't expect to add uh yeah, if I'd taken the rock from another tank it would have worked faster well i was gonna say if you add if you set up a seahorse tank and you just have artificial decorations and nothing really in the sump and you add some chloramax that's not going to work right you have to actually give the bacteria something to grow on whether it be dry rock or rock that you cycled or K1 or something, you've got to make sure that you yeah, take you have, care of that beneficial. So what something. was in that tank, Ray? That's what I wanted to know. Just rock. Just rock. That's Just dry it. rock. How much? Oh, gosh, I don't know. I don't <laughs> bother weighing it out. I just go by eye. See, these like, days, the reefers oh, are like, you need two pounds for this. And I'll yeah. tell you something. Back when I started in, uh, I forget, very early 90s with the, the salt water, everybody was talking about a, a pound per gallon. Well, that was yep. a bunch of crock because how, you don't really know because the density of every piece of rock is different. And yep. people were using this heavy stuff and they were using this light stuff. Well, if you light, use the light pour stuff, you needed a way less uh, actual poundage of rock than you did for the heavy stuff. 
the heavy stuff was so dense and not uh, so porous, so it didn't have as much uh, surface area. So to use one, uh, one pound per gallon of dense stuff was not going to give you the same result as one pound of the uh, very light porous stuff. Gotcha, gotcha, good point. And I did want to say, uh, real quick, sorry, let me come back. That Zen made the point, and don't get me wrong, I love Fritz products, and I have used them in my big tank, but it doesn't always feel necessary. I want to echo in and say I agree with you. you. As me and Holly talked about earlier, beneficial bacteria does have a place in the industry today. It works, it does, but you don't need it. You can cycle media ahead of time with just ammonia, no, yeah. nothing else. It just um, takes longer if you're only using ammonia. I've never in my life used any beneficial bacteria. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll admit, guys, I have. It's my go-to um, mm -hmm. just to be on the safe side, right? Like Ray's talking about setting up a tank in a day. I've done that also for the piebalds. Mm -hmm. And I did use beneficial bacteria just because I didn't have um cycled media and i didn't have what i felt comfortable with putting seahorses in right but if you cycle ahead of time with ammonia and have your tank ready no need for it totally agree nothing wrong with the products they work um until they're expired and we're going to find out about, <laughs> out about that more but um but why spend the money Mm -hmm. You can do it any way you want to do it, right? We're just mm -hmm. here to try to help you through the process. And when you have a problem, we're here to help you through it. Mm -hmm. And I would always have Prime on hand is the one thing I can say for sure. What's the one thing you would say for sure, Holly? Someone setting up for seahorses, what's the one thing you would say? Anything. For Well, for me, I don't, I mean, I don't know. Everybody's different on what their concerns are i think for me i want to make sure the tank cycled i yep. mean that's the biggest thing and i keep prime on hand too in case something goes wrong but that was always my my biggest thing when i'm starting new tanks i want to make sure it's cycled because i don't want to worry yep. if it wasn't i mean i might be able to fix it but I'd be worried about it. Like when I had my fry and I didn't have a big enough grow out tank for them, I had them in a 29 gallon with no sup. It had like your standard hang on back filter. It was a old freshwater tank because it was all I had. And my juveniles were in there briefly until I could get a grow out tank set up. And I was doing water changes every day or every other day to keep up with the bio load because I had to. But even in between, I would worry about them and it was just yep. a stress for me. So no, yeah, I'm, I'm I'd, totally rather not, you. I'd rather not worry. I mean, I, I got them through, they all survived it, but it was stressful for me because I was well, always eating the too small a take. I was always having to do water changes. I was always, you know, well, making up why, for not being ready for them when they grew up. Well, that's why I can't remember the quote, but the prevention is pound of something. Yeah, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. That's it. Is. Thank you. And my point is, right, like when I did have to set up that tank, yes, mm -hmm. it worked out for me, thank God for the piebalds, but it was a worry, a constant, like I'm testing mm -hmm. constantly, mm -hmm. constantly doing water changes. If you just make sure the tank is cycled and you have the media to handle the bio load ahead of time, you don't have to go through that. So totally with you. Well, and um, then I, rem I remember the reason that I have this glass 75 gallon tank that's not drilled and has the overflow boxes I hate mm -hmm. is because of an emergency situation. Because okay. I had a great big acrylic tank that did have built in overflow and everything. And that tank split a seam one day and I lost 85 gallons all over 
this mm. room Mm-mm. and had to rush the seahorses in into buckets very quickly and set up the hospital tank and they all went into the hospital tank which was of course too small for them and i had to drive out that day and buy them a tank and thank goodness it just happened to be petco's half off (laughs) right yeah so i got this 75 gallon and brought it home and we we set it up and and I didn't have a way to connect it to the sump for like two weeks. Because they don't sell. I don't live where there's aquarium stuff. I'm in the middle of right. nowhere. So I had to order overflow boxes. And they took, I want to say, almost two weeks to get here. So meantime, years ago, I had a little seahorse tank that I kept on a canister filter, which I hate canister filters. But I, I, I put it back in service and put their biomedia inside the canister filter and ran it for them while I was waiting to connect it to the sump. They had no sump connection. No, I'm glad, I'm glad so, you and told anyway, There we go. Stressful again. And yeah. Stressful, but, but, that, the butt. <laughs> but you just said the key is if you have cycled media, whether it be from a tank, from a bucket, from whatever. Mm -hmm. If you have cycled media, you have gold, right? Because you're ready, ready, right? So that's why I I would never suggest using the keep sponges in the sump and then you can start up a new tank. No. Um, But I would absolutely suggest cycling K1 media if you're Mm -hmm. able ahead of time. And, mm-hmm. and stuff like that, because if you have it pre-cycled or cycled from another tank, you really can just transition to another tank. Mm-hmm. And you're going to worry because we love our animals. But mm-hmm. I'm just saying it's not going to be as much of a worry. It won't be as stressful. <laughs> as doing something like Ray or I did, where you're literally having to count on bottle bacteria, in my case, not in his, but or, you know, cycling to work in in a heartbeat with prime or Chloramax because i always wonder too and i i shouldn't say this live but i'm going to because whatever it's wine wednesday right but i've always wondered like we talked earlier about the fact that we don't do fish in cycles anymore because we we know it's not good for the fish right it's mm-hmm. hurting them so I want to know, and I'm going to ask the company, Prime, Seachem, this, um, how I understand that Prime converts ammonia to ammonium, so it's not burning them, but is it not still bad for them to be in the conditions? No. Why not? Well, I don't remember all the chemical uh, changes that goes through now. Uh, that's beyond my capability sure. now with this sure. dimension. But um, I accepted the knowledge of the experts at the time that I was doing the research that uh, there was no problem with it, and uh, I never, ever did have well, a problem. Well, I, I will say, well, to vouch that. for what you just said, again, guys, I had discus lying on the floor of the tank, dying, gasping. Oh. I added prime. And they were swimming around in five minutes, acting like nothing happened. <laughs> I've had, you know, many circumstances okay. where Prime saved the day. So mm-hmm. I'm not disagreeing. I'm just telling you guys, I will reach out to the company and try to get the details so we can actually say this is why, you mm-hmm. know, it's okay. Um, but it also matters how soon you get it in there uh, after the... Uh, say if ammonia is causing the problem because they can get if you get it right soon then uh, you can get a recovery but if you leave it uh, for a fair bit of time once those gills get burned sure. then it's unlikely that you're going to save right. them so pay attention to your fish right I mean and pay attention to your water quality I would say um, I, I'll reach out to the company guys and try to get more information 
Um, and I'm trying to see if we have any more. Bonnie, I'm glad you bought your RODI unit for the seahorses you have coming soon. Mm -hmm. We can't wait to see. Bonnie, as I've extended to everyone else, anyone new setting up with seahorses, if you're willing, we would love for you to come into the video. I can give you a link. It's as easy as clicking a link. We'd love to see your setup process and you join us on Wine Wednesdays and, you know, show us how you're proceeding and ask questions and, you know, get you to success. I think you've kept them before. I can't remember, but I think I, I'm not saying you need us. I'm just saying it'd be cool for you to share with us. We'd love it. And I think, I think we're at the calling point here, guys. I don't know. Anything else? Rick, call us. <laughs> <We're calling you. laughs> Ray, I know you had to step out. Was there anything else that I cut you off from that you wanted to add? Or nope. All right. I think we covered it. Well, look at it Basically, this way. Basically, there's no if, answer for anything. If there guys. was something, I usually wouldn't remember Ray, it anyway. I was going to say, there's no real answer. There's no real math quotation that you can like. Five plus five equals this. There's no pounds that equal anything. It's just when you set up, set up for success by cycling ahead of time and trying to be prepared, getting the equipment you need, getting the tank set up first. And then if you have a problem, come here and we'll help you. That's it. That's all I got. The other thing we just want uh, people to remember that uh, my way isn't the only Wait. way. And... Uh, and for a lot of uh, the ways that are used, I can't comment on them a great deal because I've never right. used them or uh, personal choice wouldn't want to use them. So uh, I comment basically on the things that I do have the experience with or the fact or on some things that uh, I've learned, even though I, maybe I haven't done them, I've learned from uh, reputable, sor reputable sources or people uh sufficient about the topic to make a decision to comment on but most of the stuff is uh just based on my own personal experience and as part, there's a lot of different ways that people can succeed the unfortunate part is some people succeed just to through uh pure right. luck in uh, their livestock happen to be very resilient and they th feel that everything they've done is the way to do it Somebody else tries that and they That's lose right. it. That's why we're here. It's best to go with what the majority of long-term keepers recommend over someone that's uh, just on a small scale and uh, maybe has only had one setup. Ray, that's why we appreciate you so much. I need to, I, I'm admitting I still haven't checked on your plaque. But you are very valued and your experiences are very valued. Even though we have different experiences, that's why we're here to share them. And mm -hmm. I don't think it's wrong when you tell someone, hey, you can try it that way. I wouldn't suggest it though, because mm -hmm. this is no. what's happened and this is what yep. I've seen. And you've been doing this for a lot longer than me or Holly or anybody else. And we appreciate you. So don't and ever have thousands of seahorses. <laughs> right. Well, the other thing is too, that sometimes uh, if I'm recommending something to somebody and like you were just saying there, well, you can do it that way, but uh, for this reason or something, and then ex explain, well, sometimes with someone that uh, depending on their background, the explanation is it's going to be too involved. Right. So rather than give an explanation, I've just point blank, blank said, well, uh, it's best not to do that. Um, I could, if I had the time or the inclination to sit and explain it all at that time, then I could have said many times, well, you can do it this way. This, but, that, and the other, right. Uh, well, they yeah. just need, they so sometimes it was the easier route and people would get mad at me well, for it. Uh, they but it was, it was just the case of you've only got so much time when you're dealing with somebody, especially when we were dealing on the uh, the forums. Um, and even Facebook, and the threads because you got other people disjointed. saying stuff. And No, I get it. When I prefer and to I keep it simple. 
honest. I trust Ray's advice. I don't need to know the whys or everyone, background. <laughs> everyone should trust Ray's advice. Everyone should trust Dan's advice. But I'll tell you, I was one of the people that when I first tried to order seahorses from Dan and I, you know, press the button to place my order. And then it said, we'll contact you. I was like, what? And then they contacted me and they were like, so how's your tank set up? And I'm like, who the F are you? Right? <laughs> like, why are you asking me this? And they were like, no, 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 no. We're just trying to, we don't want to sell you seahorses that you can't keep. Right? So, mm -hmm. and then I, oh my God, I, you, you guys know, I love Dan now. He's my favorite person. And so I get that. That feeling. is so weird. They never called me. See, and I had I mine. Know. This was maybe earlier. I had maybe. mine. It was 2007. Oh no. Yeah. Mine was way later. Yeah. Yeah. But, so maybe they just said, maybe people were losing seahorses right, and they're like, they we got to stop well. this and, and so make sure people, people get educated. Well, and Dan saw, we mm -hmm. need to start educating people to care mm -hmm. for their seahorses. So Ray, I completely understand what you said. I, I Hell, I, I'm not finishing the things I'm promising to do because I don't have the time in the day, in the week, in the month, in the year. I get it. And I think that Hey, wait till you get to be my age. It's a hell of a lot harder. <laughs> I'm just going to say. It takes me hours to do half an hour's work right? now. I'm just going to say <laughs> that that's why you guys, when you see if somebody gets upset because somebody says, just don't do it that way. We're just frustrated and minimizing time. Tell them to come here. If they ask the question here, we can explore it and talk about it in depth. And Ray can say. Hey, it's because when I did this, this happened and et cetera. Mm -hmm. So just, you know, try to tell people to come to the show so that we can actually talk because I get it too. You know, trying to type something and you're competing with everybody else typing and somebody's giving bad information. It's so frustrating. It's so frustrating. So we'll never lead you wrong here. If I don't know an answer, I'm going to tell you. I don't know why Prime doesn't expire. So I'm going to reach out and find out. We will always tell you the truth and we will do our best to help you keep seahorses. That's the point. And we want to hear about your experiences. Like Ray said, there's so many other ways now. Share them. We're going to tell you we think you're crazy if you're keeping clownfish with seahorses. But if you show us we're wrong, then we'll accept it, right? We'll also say maybe you have just really nice clownfish because mine were bitches. But that, that being said... <laughs> I'm going to end the show on that note. <laughs> uh, yeah, Ray, why do you think they don't expire? Carmax and Prime. Uh, imagine the chemicals used in it uh, have a very, very slow deterioration rate. And I'm so, a lot of like, this stuff will outlive you. <laughs> right. Well, I'm wondering, too, and I'm going to contact the company. I'm wondering if like Holly was asking if it matters if it's uncapped or, you know, opened or if it's refrigerated because I've never done anything to my prime and it's always worked for me. Like, yeah, I've never the temperature is too cold or too hot for it or I'm gonna ask. other things that break it down. Yeah. All That'd right. be good to know. And, uh, last the corn mix that I have, it's powder. Yeah, that's a different. Last comment from Zen Ginger. I prefer to overcomplicate everything. Drive my hubby nuts so you all know we're all different. Amen. Yeah. Sister, right? <laughs> I'm oh, right there with like you. A typical <laughs> I love to get Ray up in his, like, yeah. Uh, angry mode no i'm just kidding but no i get you i hear you she wants to drive her hubby nuts that's what most women ah, like uh, <laughs> on that note i'm ending it for tonight we will be back next week i'll try to have some information about prime if you guys want any topic like you know focused in on you know we come together as a community just to chat but if you have a need that's what we're here for that's what I'm hoping ends up happening eventually once I get some of you younger pups to help me with the channel. Um, that, you know, people 
can ask their question in the groups, in the forums, but then come here for the real discussion. That would be amazing. So hope you all will help me with that. And until next week, happy Wine Wednesday. We'll see you next week.